In this video, we're going to be taking a look at scatter plots and correlation. The objective is that by the end of this video, you should be able to tell if a scatter plot has positive, negative, and/or correlation, be able to predict a value using a scatter plot, and determine the best description of a scatter plot. To get us started on our first objective, we have a definition, and the definition is a scatter plot. A scatter plot is a graph that shows data points plotted on that graph. So for example, if you were given the points in this table right here, and you were to plot all of those points on a graph, you would create a scatter plot of all of those data points. So again, scatter plot just points graphed on a graph. Now let's take a look at the different types of correlation. A positive correlation tells us that as the x values get larger, the y values generally get larger as well. In other words, the points go up from left to right. So if we take a look at this picture, you'll know that it has a positive correlation because in general from left to right all of those points go up. If we were to take a look at negative correlation it's very similar as the x values get larger though in this case the y values generally get smaller. The points are grouped together in general going down or decreasing from left to right. Notice the points are scattered but again they're getting lower and lower as you go further to the right. And our last type of correlation we're going to take a look at is no correlation. There is no correlation between the x and y values if the points are scattered all over the place. In other words, you couldn't really look at the points and saying they're going up from left to right or going down from left to right because they're just scattered all over the place on the graph. So go ahead and pause the video and answer this question. What type of correlations do the graphs below show? So for the first graph, you'll notice that in general, from left to right, the points are going up. So this one would have a positive correlation. The second graph, well, the points are scattered all over the place. They don't really go up or go down, so no correlation. And the third graph, the points are grouped together generally from left to right going down. So this one would have a negative correlation. So we're now on to our second objective predicting a value using a scatter plot. We have two steps. First step is you're going to draw a line that goes through the middle of all the points on the scatter plot. The second step is to use the line you drew to predict the value you're asked to find. So taking a look at our first example, the coaches of a group of debate teams answered a survey about hours of debate team practice and number of team wins. The graph shows the results of this survey. Based on these results, if a team practices four hours per week next season, which is the best estimate of the number of debates the team can expect to win? So remember there are two steps. First, notice that we're asked to use the scatter plot. So based on these results, if the team practices for four hours. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is to make a prediction about what? Which is the best estimate of the number of debates the team can expect to win? So we're looking for the number of wins for four hours of practice. Now to do this, we have the scatter plot we're provided. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a line as close as we can through the middle of all of those points. So when you draw your line, you want to have roughly as many points above your line as you have below your line and you want to draw your line as straight as possible and that's fairly decent. Notice we have points above, we have points below and our line generally goes to the middle of all of those points. In order to make a prediction for four hours we're going to find four hours on our scatter plot and so we look at our labels hours of practice per week. We find four so that's four hours and we're going to follow four straight up until we hit our line. Looks like we hit our line right around, well, a little bit more than 16. 
So it looks like maybe 17, maybe 16, maybe 15. Somewhere in that general area is going to be our prediction based on the line we drew. So we look at our answer choices and we find the one that's closest to 16. In this case, 16 is an answer choice, so we select 16. Here's one for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video, read the problem, work it out, see if you can find an answer and press play when you're ready to see the answer. Okay, so we read the problem. We know that the problem is about a scatter plot of the number of cavities versus the number of times the patient brushes per week. And we're asked to make a prediction about eight times per week being brushed. So the first thing we're going to do, and this one's a little bit more difficult, we're going to try to draw a line that goes to the middle of all the points. Now notice we're not going to want to draw a line straight down here because that is going to not have as many points above and below the line. It's not really through the middle of all the points. We draw a line about there. That's about okay. We've got some points above, we've got some points below. It's generally in the middle of all the points. So using that, if we follow 8 straight up, we notice we hit our line right here, which matches up with two cavities. So a person, according to that dentist's results, a person who brushes their teeth eight times per week had eight, two cavities or might have two cavities to be expected. We're now on to our third objective, which is to determine the best description of a scatter plot. Go ahead and read the problem and check out the answer choices, pausing the video, and see which answer choice makes the most sense to you. I want you to do this first because sometimes your thinking and reasoning is completely great and different from mine, but still 100% accurate. So go ahead and give it a try, and after you're done trying, go ahead and press play, and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so you read the problem, and it says the graph below shows a relationship between the distance in miles the delivery truck traveled and the number of hours each delivery took. Which best describes the relationship shown on the graph? The first answer choice says, if the delivery truck travels 600 miles, it will take under 9 hours to make the trip. So we're going to do like what we did on the previous objective, and we're going to try to make a prediction about 9 hours and 600 miles. So we find 600 miles, and we follow it up. First, let's draw our line of fit. Let's follow 600 up. It looks like it lands right around nine and a half, maybe 10, maybe nine hours. Here it's saying that, and this is a general statement, so they mean this is generally true. If the delivery trucks travel 600 miles, it will take less than nine hours to complete the trip. It's not really a great description because if you look at it, it looks like it should take right around anywhere from nine to 10, maybe 11, maybe 12 hours total to make the trip. So that's not a great choice. I'm going to put a small little X off to the side for right now. Let's read the second answer choice. Delivery truck who travels more than 500 miles will take at least eight hours to make the trip. So if they travel more than 500 miles. So we find 500 and we follow 500 up. And what they're saying in general is if that it's over 500 miles, it'll take more than eight hours. So here's eight hours here, and it looks like all of the points to the right are more than eight hours. So that looks like a pretty good description. See, there is no correlation. Well, there's clearly a correlation. As you go from left to right, there's definitely a positive correlation. So C definitely doesn't work. D, there is a nonlinear correlation meaning you couldn't draw a straight line generally up from left to right. And, well, that's kind of a minor x. It, you could draw a line through those points fairly well to give us a linear correlation. So the best answer choice so far, the one that matched the best, was answer choice B. Because that was the only one that really accurately matched the information we were given. 
So here's one more for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video, work it out, and press play when you're ready to see the answer. So for this one, the most accurate answer was, <laughs> let's take a look. If you look at it, the points are scattered all over the place. So that means that there's generally no correlation between the age and the number of setups a person does weekly.